What is the first thing you do when you get on a video call? Most of us look at ourselves. We want to make sure that our hair looks okay and there's nothing weird going on in the background. Essentially, we want to make a great impression. And now that many of us are remote or virtual first, often the only way our colleagues or clients see us is on video. So that makes video really important. And many people still don't know how to use it to their full advantage. Today, you're going to learn the essentials for how to present yourself in the best light, both figuratively and literally, to get noticed by your colleagues, clients, and peers by making a strong first impression on camera, because if you can do it well, it will be one of your biggest competitive advantages. Now, before we dive in, I want to share quickly who I am and why I'm here talking about video. My name is Lorraine, and I'm passionate about helping ambitious professionals and organizations stand out to fast track their career visibility and flexibility by taking control of their professional presence, meaning both how and where they show up. I was formerly the head of editorial at Prezi, a presentation platform, and I'm a virtual speaker who teaches others about virtual presence at companies ranging from the Fortune 100 to startups. I'm also a LinkedIn learning instructor for a number of popular courses, and I was an editor at LinkedIn for six years where I was involved in a lot of video, from hosting my own video series to helping LinkedIn launch its very first video product. Now, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, take screenshots during this session, post it on socials, please tag me, tag Atlassian, Atlassian is wonderful at responding on LinkedIn, so we can keep the conversation going even after the session is over today. Now, I think we can all agree that with all of these distractions and things that we have to do in a day, it is becoming very, very difficult to capture attention. And that is why the T method is critical to you making that memorable first impression on camera. Now, what is the first thing you do each morning? For many of us, it's going to be grabbing a cup of coffee or let's just call it tea in this case. The T method covers the very first things that you should tackle before jumping onto a video call. The T method is going to ensure that you appear both confident and competent, and it's going to elevate how the person on the other side perceives you. Do you want to look like someone who is professional and put together? The T method is going to help you get there. Now, what is this T method exactly? T stands for tech, energy, and aesthetics. Let's start with T. Tech is probably one of the more overwhelming aspects of our new virtual worlds. We have a lot of new things to think about compared to before in our offices where all we had to do was show up in a room and turn on that central microphone. So I wanna make the tech part less overwhelming for you. So I'm gonna share what I view as the, just the basics that you need to have an awesome video call. And these are personally what I use, they worked very well for me, and they don't break the bank, which I think is a very important consideration. Now, in terms of the hardware you'll, you'll need, you'll wanna make sure you have an external microphone, a proper webcam, and I recommend you get a clicker. And then you'll also wanna make sure that you have the right software. Today, specifically, we're going to talk about our microphone, our external camera, and our software. So let's start off talking about our microphones. If you change one thing today, make sure that your audio is good. If the sound is good, you'll be able to stay engaged no matter how bad your video is. And same goes for the person on the other side. Also, many people will forgive bad cameras, but they won't forgive bad audio. And I'm sure we've all been on those video calls where every third word the person is saying is choppy and you just wanna hang up right there and then because I mean, what's the point? You can't hear what they're saying. And this is why I recommend buying an external microphone. Now, one benefit is that you will have better sound quality because the microphones inside our laptops are not great. Your sound is automatically going to be crisper and richer. And not only that, but you can adjust volume and other toggles like bass, for example, to ensure you have the best sound based on your voice. And there's also another really practical use for it. Needing to click uh, unmute to speak up in meetings or hold down the space bar um, to speak up on Zoom calls takes some coordination. And the moment you decide you want to say something, when you have to go click unmute or you have to click the space bar and there's that bit of a lag, it just makes it even more difficult to speak up, especially for my introverts out there. Now, 
The physical microphone is so helpful because all you have to do to speak is just literally click the physical button to unmute. So it makes conversation a lot easier on calls. Now, here are a few recommendations for you for microphones. So I use this one, Fifine, got it from Amazon, works perfectly fine. Sure is a popular brand, Neat as well, and AKG. Now, I've only used this first one here, but I've talked to many keynote speakers who I respect, who I've learned from, who recommend these three. So these are just a bunch of for you to choose from different price ranges. So take a look. Next, let's dive into our webcams. External cameras are by far one of the best investments you can make. Our laptop webcams are really bad. They make us look like this. We're kind of grainy and dark and it's just kind of muted. You can't really see a lot of my facial expressions. Now, when I got my Logitech Brio, which is considered one of the better webcams for the price, I then looked like this. I instantly felt more confident. I knew I was looking a lot better on camera. I was sharper, crisper. Uh, the camera does a really good job of picking up the lighting better. I just looked a lot more professional and there was a bit more customization as well. So I could zoom in a little bit closer to my face, zoom farther away, change some of the lighting settings. So it was really great. Now I'm gonna share a few other cameras that can work well for you. So I mentioned the Logitech Brio, that's the one that I use. You may also want to try an Exigo camera, the Elgato face cam, and maybe if you're not ready to make that investment yet, maybe you just use your phone. And I'll share about how you can do that in our next section, which is software. So there's a few key pieces of software that I'd recommend to enhance your tech setup. And again, make that really memorable, strong impression on video. Crisp is amazing for blocking out background noise and it works with external microphones. And I have had construction happening right outside my window. It was so loud and I'll ask people on the call, can you hear that? And they say no. So Crisp has been really wonderful for that. Camo. So I talked about using the uh, your cell phone earlier as a webcam. So Camo allows you to use your phone as a camera. And our phone cameras are actually amazing if you test it out. So I encourage you all to take advantage of using them as webcams. There's software like Ecamm, which also gives you additional controls over how your video appears and also helps with live streaming. And OBS is a similar um, software as well for additional video controls. Now, another key thing when it comes to tech is Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi is often the bad culprit of bad audio or video quality. Now, ideally, you should be hardwired with an Ethernet cord if you're lucky enough to have one, but I know it's not always possible. So for those with unstable internet, which of course always seems to be the case at the worst times, right? <laughs> Check out Speedify, which actually combines all of your available networks into one. And it becomes a super network, which includes your Ethernet, your phone, whatever other networks you have around your house. So you always have backup, backup, backup um, as one thing drops. So we've covered the tech portion. Let's move into the next part of the T method. And that is going to be your energy. Now, when you hear me say energy, what do you think of? You probably think about whether you feel awake and you look alert for the call, but energy is a lot of other things too. So energy includes your introduction, resetting yourself, eye contact, and smiling. And today specifically, we're going to talk about your intro and eye contact. Now, people make a first impression of you in as little time as a few milliseconds in, and in as most as a few seconds, which is really not a lot of time at all. This first impression is going to be heavily influenced by your energy. So I wanna share a few tricks with you that will help. The first thing is to remember, that your mood does matter. And even though we're on video, we, people can sense if we're feeling agitated or tired or uncomfortable. And actually, I think these feelings become even more magnified on video because video kind of mutes energy, mutes any positive energy or any emotions. So they just don't come through as well as they do in person with this barrier of the screen. So we need to put in a little bit of extra work. Now, one way to counteract being seen as having negative emotions on video or even looking neutral, which is not the ideal as well, is to think of a good or funny memory before joining a call, something that makes you smile. Next, you'll wanna also think about what you're actually saying when you get on these calls. 
So I think many of us have been in this scenario. So we start off a call with questions like, how are you? Can you hear me okay? Can you see my screen? I mean, many of us, this is what we hear most of the time. But these aren't going to be the ideal way to start off a call because as you know from your own experience, they're quite generic. They can make you seem unprepared and they really don't help you stand out because again, we hear these questions all the time. How about we change those questions to ones like, it is so great to see you. How are you? You know, it's been a long time. I'd love to hear what you're most excited to be working on right now versus how are you? How's work been going? Are you busy? Or what was the highlight of your weekend instead of how was your weekend? Because most people say it was good. Or are you watching any interesting shows? What do you recommend? Questions like these are going to break up that monotony we usually experience when joining the call and they awaken the brain out of autopilot. So if you can be that person to help turn small talk into interesting conversations, you're naturally just going to connect better by learning more about each other and you're instantly be going to become more memorable because people will actually enjoy talking to you and they'll have something that they want to share. So I want you all to think about a question that you might use on your next call. Write it down right now, find a sticky note or a piece of paper nearby and put it next to your uh, webcam or on your computer somewhere so you can remember to ask that new energy starter question at the start of your call. Lastly, we'll wanna make sure that the language that we are using is inclusive. So you'll want to find opportunities to use people's first names and use language like we, our, and us. Now for this first point here, using people's names, humans love hearing our names. It really makes us feel like a sense of belonging and we feel more connected with the person. And it also recaptures attention if someone is zoning out and it brings their focus back into the call. Now for the collaborative language, there's a benefit for that. If the person you're talking to feels like they're part of something and they're part of a group, they're likely going to be more motivated to contribute and bring their best self into the discussion. And you're going to be seen as more of a leader. And there's research behind this. So according to research published in the Harvard Business Review, people who used I statements were typically more junior, whereas the confident leaders, they used um, collaborative language like we, our, us. They did not feel the need to call attention to themselves. And in fact, they actually were more likely to call attention to the collective group or team. Now, when it comes to language, really the key takeaway here is that by being thoughtful about the words we use, the questions we ask, we have the opportunity to really stand out and make that lasting impression. Next, let's talk about how eye contact can help support what we are actually saying on our calls. So you should always aim to be looking at the camera or right below it. Now we make eye contact and we shake hands in person to boost oxytocin, which is that social feel-good hormone. It makes us feel connected to each other. So this is how we're going to re recreate that online as well. Now eye contact on video, I know it is hard to do because it's human nature to want to look at ourselves in the uh, self view to make sure we look okay, or we might want to see how we look reacting to what someone said, but as best as you can, I recommend that you fight this urge. It's super distracting and it takes away from your eye contact. And if you're having trouble with this, I recommend turning off selfie, which also has the added benefit of helping with uh, video fatigue. Now, I also see a lot of presentations and even video calls these days where people are still looking sideways at a separate monitor or off to the side, maybe right here at some content that they're presenting. And imagine if I was talking like this, this whole session, you would wonder, what is she looking at? Is she paying attention? It's hard for me to connect with her because it doesn't look like she's looking at me. And so as best as you can, you can really see now compared to this, eye contact just makes a world of difference. And so if you have, a lot of people have their um, videos off to the side. So this is also why I recommend that external webcam to bring it to your main monitor so you can be looking straight ahead. Next, let's move on to A, aesthetics. So aesthetics are not just about how you look on camera, but also how the world looks around you and how all those things combine to make that first impression. So aesthetics includes lighting, your environment, your framing, and your clothing. And today we're going to talk about lighting and your environment. So let's start off with lighting. 
believe it or not, confidence can be greatly, greatly impacted by lighting. And I didn't understand this at first, but I have completely seen it firsthand. And the good news is that lighting is easy to fix, but for whatever reason, it's often an afterthought for people. So I want to show you this in action. So right now my lighting looks good, but when we look like this, it's distracting, it's unclear. And if I was talking like this the whole time, you would probably wonder what's wrong with Lorraine's webcam or, or her, her room. Like, why doesn't she turn on a light? And I know when I see myself with bad lighting, I don't feel good about how I'm appearing either. And it kind of, you know, hurts my confidence. But good lighting is going to make you look more put together, brighter. It really does make people look younger and fresher and more professional. So I recommend getting ring lights maybe, ideally at least um, a foot to 16 inches in diameter, or you might wanna try a softbox, which is this thing you see here that people usually see in photo studios. So for me, I personally have a softbox in front of me. It has different color settings, which is good. And then I have two ring lights on the side. So I'm, you know, light it up. <laughs> and for those who are lucky enough to have windows in their workspace, natural light is really going to be the best option and it's free. So you should ideally have the window in front of you so that the light is shining in directly on your face. And really, no matter what light source you choose, window, softbox, ring light, just remember that it needs to come from the front and never from behind you. Because if it comes from behind you, you're going to get dark and it's going to have a shadow on you. And it's going to look like you're in some sort of witness protection program. And that's definitely not the impression we want to give other people. So again, light comes from the front and choose various sources. Next up, let's talk about curating our environments. Having a well thought out curated environment is going to give a more professional look and feel to your presentation uh, sorry, and uh, your presentation, uh, how you appear on camera. And similar to lighting, if you look more professional, you're going to be more confident with how you're coming off. And when you are more confident, people do view you as more competent. So this here is probably something that we want to avoid. Kind of messy, cluttered. Now, before I moved into this apartment, actually two apartments ago, I was in a studio and super small space. I literally only had one spot I could stick my small desk and it was right in front of my bed. And so on video calls, my bed was in my background and I always felt super weird about it, wondering were people looking at my background, were people paying attention to me? And spacing issues like these, they can't always be helped, but if you are in a similar situation, um, there are creative ways that you can kind of get around that. So I would recommend maybe getting a room divider. I had a coworker who hung up a curtain behind him, which I thought was really cool. Um, and so you can see like even, you know, your whole apartment doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be this small space behind you that looks a little bit more professional and more put together. So my recommendation is simpler is better starting off. When you're starting off, a clean background like Jessica is, here, uh, is using here usually works best so that you and your content don't get lost and so people don't, again, get distracted by what's going on behind you. It's just a white wall. But you can get more creative with it when you start getting more comfortable with your video presence. So any NPR fans in the audience, you might recognize Guy Raz here. He chose an outdoor setting for his video. It looks great, it looks really creative, and he's getting all that natural light I mentioned earlier is the ideal. Or we might wanna look at this example by Ted here. She's a body language expert, love her background. She has you know, the clean background, but has pops of color with the flowers. She had all of this natural light. She looked professional, she looked personable. That for me at least is the ideal goal. And so this is also a great example to learn from. And you can even see she has some purple there. I have some purple back here. So I definitely took inspiration from her. Now, fun fact, I used to call this section curating your background. It was all about the background. But I think with all of the advances that we're seeing in tech and how people are up-leveling their video calls, uh, curating your environment is going to be a more accurate description of what's going on and what you need to do to really stand out and impress. So this is a nice background here. And here's an example showing how you can have both that great background and your video environment becomes even more impressive once you add some visuals on screen, like a simple name tag, maybe a company logo. logo. And I think this here, this is an example of truly curating the whole virtual and physical environment on camera to create that really great impression. Now, this is you know, extremely valuable real estate. We don't have too much of it, so we need to make sure we're making the most of it to get noticed. All right, let's move into a recap. 
For your tech, you'll want to ensure you have the necessary hardware with a microphone and external webcam. And you'll also want the right software to enhance the tech that you do already have. For energy, you'll want to focus on your intro and eye contact. And for aesthetics, you'll want to fix your lighting and curate your environment. If you found this session helpful, please connect with me on LinkedIn and subscribe to my newsletter. You can also reach out if you'd like to bring me in as a speaker to other organizations you're part of. I would be more than honored to do that. And I'd also appreciate if you could fill out my feedback survey. It will be quick. There's literally three questions on there. It's going to take you 10 seconds. And it helps me a lot to know where I can improve and what you found helpful. And if you still need more incentive, there is a team method gift in the feedback form as well. <laughs> so hope that you'll check that out and thank you in advance. One closing thought for all of you. I really want to reiterate again that with just a few simple, simple changes to your virtual presence, to how you come across on camera uh, at, at the first impression, it really does make a world of difference to ensure you leave that lasting positive impression. And I am so, so excited for you all to get started using the T method and definitely let me know on LinkedIn how it's going. And thank you so much for watching.